Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's presentation of the Kirk webinar series entitled Using Competition to Improve Campus Recycling Programs. My name is Larry Cook. I'm the Recycling and Waste Manager at the University of South Carolina, as well as Chair of the Kirk Board of Directors. I'll be your moderator today. For those of you not familiar with Kirk, the College and University Recycling Coalition is a member-based organization that works to grow collegiate recycling and waste reduction efforts by fostering technical information exchange and networking opportunities between the staff and student leaders implementing programs. Today's program is part of our free Kirk webinar series, which is designed to highlight innovative campus programs and provide trends and perspectives on a broad range of operational, educational, and other topics related to collegiate recycling and sustainable materials management. Today's program is the first webinar in our 2019 series. I want to thank our partner, AISHI, the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education for the logistical and promotional support of the webinar series. I also want to recognize Recyclemania and the National Wildlife Federation for their participation in today's program. We have a few housekeeping notes to go over. If you have problems with your audio or video during the webinar, you can reach a live technician by calling GoToWebinar's customer support line at 800 2636317. To avoid background noise, we've placed all but our panelists' lines on mute. We encourage you to submit questions at any time, however, by using the dashboard on the right side of your screen. Simply click the plus symbol where it says questions to type us a note, and we will read as many of those as possible out loud at the end of the presentations. Copies of today's presentation slides will be available to download and a recording of it will be available to stream within the next day or so from the Kirk website, www.curc, the number three, letter R, dot org. On today's webinar, we'll hear two presentations focused on ways collegiate recycling and sustainability programs have used competition to engage and educate their campus populations. Many programs have found organized competitions to be an effective way to engage students, faculty, and staff, create buzz around recycling goals, and dare I say, trick people into becoming interested in sustainability by distracting them with games. We'll start with a presentation from Amy Preble of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, who will describe their residential green games event. Next, we'll hear from Deborah Steinberg from Knox College in Galesburg, Illinois. Deborah will share her experience of participating in the Recyclemania competition. Finally, we'll hear from Christy Jones from the National Wildlife Federation and Recyclemania, who will describe the nuts and bolts of Recyclemania. Amy Preble is Waste Diversion Coordinator in the Office of Waste Reduction and Recycling at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, a position she has held since November 1999. She manages the indoor recycling program, educates the campus community about waste reduction and recycling, and works on expanding existing recycling programs. Amy's projects include residential recycling games, coordinating student move in and student move out, and collaborating with various departments on campus to encourage waste reduction wherever possible. Amy also serves as chair of the Collegiate Recyclers Coalition of the Carolina Recycling Association. She is a UNC Chapel Hill alumna with a degree in women's studies. Welcome, Amy. Thanks, Larry. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna talk today about Green Games, which is a really longstanding program um, in our residence halls. Um, and uh, it's gone through a lot of changes over the years. And um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how it started and how it's evolved into um, what we have now. Um, what, we, what it is now, it's a student-led environmental competition between the residence hall communities on campus. Um, it's based mostly around programming. So students can earn points by either um, leading or attending um, programming with environmental content. So um, the purpose is to promote sustainable behavior and environmental education. And this can take the form of programs, contests, events, things like that. Uh, so this wall of text kind of shows the history of Green Games, but um, 
just to kind of summarize, it started out in 1993 as a student organization, um, and it was for a while um, an official student recognized organization, and it was based mostly around numbers, kind of like Recycle Mania. So it was um, based around which um, residence halls could recycle the most, could save the most water, and could conserve the most energy. Um, and that worked really well, but it also was a little bit problematic in that it was um, really hard to get reliable water stats and energy stats um, for each residence hall. And also it was hard to compare apples to apples. So, um, you know, some residence halls had washing machines and some didn't. Some had been renovated and were more energy efficient than others. And we also didn't have and still don't have building by building recycling data. So all of that was estimated. Um, so they started kind of in the mid-90s incorporating activities and program, programming to become a bigger part of the ranking process. Um, and then um, in 2000, the students that were running Green Games at the time graduated, and there weren't any students to take their place. So it, um, the Office of Waste Reduction and Recycling kind of took Green Games under our wing, and we hired a student intern to run it out of our office. And the budget for that was split between the Office of Waste Reduction and Recycling and Housing. And after that, um, we really started to move away from the numbers um, about recycling and water conservation and energy conservation and started to concentrate more and more on the programming year after year. Um, and we were still kind of um, giving out monetary prizes every year to encourage participation because we have about 8,500 students in the residence halls. So um, you're always only going to get a certain percentage of students to participate in any kind of programming you have in the residence halls. Um, so it was, you know, always a challenge to get students to participate. So we had monetary awards for a while, and then we were giving out actual kind of physical prizes at the end of the year to the winners, things like, um, I think one year we gave a pool table away <laughs> back in the early 2000s and things like that. Um, but then we started to move away from that even because the participation started to grow year after year. And also we were realizing that we were giving awards away at the very end of the academic year to the winning residence hall communities, but the students that were enjoying it were the students the following year who hadn't really, you know, kind of earned those prizes. So um, as Green Games got more and more popular, we completely eliminated the um, kind of stats portion and it became completely programming related. And also all we gave out were certificates at the end of the year. So it just kind of became a competition based around sort of the joy of competing and, you know, the joy of winning and they get like a certificate at the end of the year. Um, and it also sort of really opened it up and made it a lot more flexible. So we had, you know, we could have different categories every year based on whatever was going on. So for instance, if one year, you know, we had a drought in our region and there were a lot of water conservation efforts on campus, we could focus, you know, um, a lot of our efforts and a lot of the programming and or have a water you know conservation contest and you can earn green games points for that or um, it really could also be kind of personalized around the student intern that was running it a particular year so one year um, the award ceremony was a sustainable fashion show because that was what that particular student intern was really interested in and then one year we had an environmental awareness march um, as our uh, award ceremony because that was that was that particular student in turn was really interested in and we also could you know create awards that would last for a couple of years to try to encourage residence hall communities that weren't really participating to kind of come back um, and participate more depending and those don't necessarily have to always be awards um, but now they can you know stay for a couple of years and then go back go away and so this year is our 25th anniversary, um, which we're really excited about. We're having a big party um, at the end of the semester. We're bringing back a bunch of our um, intern alumni. We're bringing back um, the former director of housing who's retired, um, who actually has institutional memory of 
Green Games all the way back from the beginning and was a huge supporter of Green Games all the way through. We actually have an award named after him. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and some of these pictures show kind of the different sort of, you know, the breadth of all the different ways you can participate in Green Games, all the things like from service projects where you can volunteer at a community garden to creek cleanups to, you know, the um, environmental awareness march where they made their own signs to all different kinds of things. Um, so, you know, um, we also have uh, what's known as BYO events, which means bring your own. So a lot of times there's already a lot of programming going on in the residence halls because um, RAs and community government have to put on their own programming anyway. And so um, in a way to entice students to attend that programming is to serve food. And so if they, um, uh, make students bring their own reusable cup or bowl or spoon or plate, et cetera, and make that what's known as a BYO um, event, then they get Green Games points for that. And um, well, that turned out to be a relatively low effort way to make events that were already happening, Green Games events. But also what we found over the years um, was that also has created kind of a culture of reuse in a lot of these residence halls because that was a way for a lot of people who, um, weren't really planning on planning like a big environmental fair in their residence hall to kind of latch on to green games and participate. It was pretty simple. They also didn't have to buy disposables. Uh, but it also really, um, you know, made the idea of reusables and why reusables was important, you know, kind of a thing in the residence halls. And it's become really popular and it's one of the most popular green games events. Um, we also give um, points per attendee, um, so and everyone has to sign, you know, a sign-up sheet and put their, you know, um, ID number and all of that. So we have that verified. Um, and then we also give five points for pictures, so that you know I can put together presentations like this, and also just for, you know, um, historical memory um, over the years. We also have monthly themes. So if we want to. Um, promote any particular thing like focus on environmental justice or focus on, you know, um, we just launched a plastic film recycling program in the residence hall. So if we want to focus on that and make sure that students know how to recycle plastic film properly, know that it's there in the residence halls, where to do it, how to do it, um, we make that a monthly theme. They get extra points for that and having events around that in their residence hall. Um, we always do at the beginning of the academic year. Um, we give out a lot of Green Games points around um, composting because we have a residence hall composting program. So making sure that um, every community has a compost kickoff where they give out information about how to compost properly because that's really important and tying that into Green Games. Um, so just this kind of breaks down the different aspects of the program. Um, these are some of the um, different ways to earn points. And a lot of these have been around, you know, since we kind of switched to an all points, you know, for programming system. Um, but some of these can change, like I said, depending on just sort of responding to uh, whatever might be going on in a particular year. But BYO programs are kind of a, have become sort of one of the backbones of Green Games. We give points for attending the monthly Green Games meetings. In community programs would be something like showing a film an environmentally themed film in your residence hall community, and then you also get points for attendees. Service projects would be something like um, a creek cleanup or volunteering at a community garden or something like that, bringing your residents to that. Um, trips or tours might be a tour of a MRF or um, our local landfill, something like that. Sending us pictures. Um, pledge, floor, pledge or floor drives would be like recycling drives. Um, which are also really popular, um, especially now with new programs like the plastic film recycling program, things like that. Um, eco reps events, so just like partnering with eco reps um, on campus, events that they sponsor in the residence halls. Um, and then so um, on campus lectures or events. So if there's like an Earth Day speaker or the Institute for the Environment on campus, has an event or a speaker and they bring their residents to that, then they can um, get points for that as well. And then um, environmentally themed bulletin boards, things like that. Um, and then, so participation. I think one of the main reasons that we kind of 
moved away um, from just measuring the recycling in the water and the energy stats, um, besides the fact that we were having trouble getting reliable data and also that it was hard to compare apples to apples, was um, that it was um, with a population that large, um, it was very passive. Most of the students were participating without really realizing they were participating. Um, in this, every student that's participating in Green Games knows they're participating in Green Games. Um, so um, that's the part that we really like about it. Um, and now that it's such a well-established program, it's been around for 25 years, it's really part of the framework of housing. Every community has a sustainability officer where a big part of their job is um, working on Green Games and every community has a designated Green Games RA um, that also is, that's a you know, part of their job is to um, work on Green Games. And so it's a really strong partnership and, um, and again, really well established. Um, but it also, you know, is, is flexible and able to kind of respond and build new partnerships as needed and things like that. Um, and, you know, again, it has kind of a spectrum. So it can engage with um, students at different levels, you know, if they really just want to attend a BYO event and learn a little bit, or if they want to kind of be really advanced and learn a lot about recycling, composting, waste reduction, environmental justice, all of that, it can, students can engage with it at all different levels of participation. Um, and it is a useful tool. Um, at this point, it really is our main tool for promoting um, programs that we're launching, anything new that's going on, anything that's happening around um, environmental issues, recycling, waste reduction in the residence halls. It's our main communication tool. So things like RecycleMania, the Game Day Challenge, when we had a drought, if you know energy management wants to pro like um, promote. Um, an energy saving contest, you know, they'll work with Green Games and they'll do it through us. Um, you know, I think um, it really is just um, kind of the best way for us to get the word out now in the residence halls because it's so well established. Um, and then again, it, it's, uh, it's really flexible and we're able to um, work as a great partner. It, we already have a really well-established partnership with housing and now with community government. They're the ones who choose the sustainability officers in every community. And um, we're working on um, trying to have a partnership with the Greek Sustainability Council because they're trying to establish um, a Greek Green Games. Um, and I, I think that's something that's still kind of evolving just because they're more just trying to um, work on getting the fraternities to recycle more and things like that. So it's not really an analogous kind of competition, but you know, I think that there are defi there's definitely um, room for partnership in that area down the road. Um, and then just you know, all different um, campus environmental organizations, um, and it's really easy to partner with us on that. Um, this year, um, we're also piloting um, a partnership with Spread It Forward through um, more recycling. I don't know if any of you all were at the Resource Recycling Conference a couple of years ago, but they did a presentation. It's a social platform um, where you can do different tasks um, around sort of environmental education and um, they are piloting it with Green Games, testing it out on campus this year. So they have different tasks that students can do, things like um, taking a selfie of themselves, recycling plastic film, you know, in the residence hall, or, you know, visiting a website, like learning about how to compost properly, or, you know, just like list of different tasks and they can earn, earn points um, towards Green Games. And it's helping them kind of figure out um, some of the bugs in their system and also how to, you know, um, like adapt, spread it forward more, you know, to this audience. And then it's also just another way for students to engage with Green Games, you know, through this um, web platform. Um, and that's uh, pretty much it. Um, this is the website for Green Games. And this is this year's uh, Green Games intern. Her name is Taylor. Um, I would encourage you, I mean, of course, at the end of the webinar, you can ask me any questions, but after this webinar is over, if you um, 
have any kind of in-depth questions about Green Games, please feel free to ask me, but also please feel free to ask Taylor because she runs the show this year and she's doing a great job. Thanks. Thank you, Amy. Um, as a quick reminder, if you have a question to ask any of um, today, any if you have a question to ask any of today's speakers, click on the plus sign next to the word question on the GoToWebinar dashboard uh, to type it in. And um, we do have a couple questions for you right now, uh, Amy. So you mentioned that um, at some point you made the transition from from the strict numbers and metrics type competition to more programming related. Do you ever have um, participants who either miss that or try and get back into comparing um, recycling rates or or has, you know, the, the been pretty seamless where, um, you know, the flexibility of just doing positive programming is, is really working for everybody? Um, I think it's been pretty seamless. I mean, it, it was definitely a process over a number of years where we kind of weaned ourselves away from that. And that was a long time ago, you know, and so uh, I, and I think we still have that kind of competition aspect in where we don't really compare weights and numbers, but we have those recycling drives that are, you know, one of the categories as part of uh, Green Games. So, and that's like, like kind of with BYO, the BYO events, recycling drives are one of the most um, popular sort of Green Games events. Students love to do that. Um, so, it's still kind of in there and it's part of the competition, but um, actual kind of, you know, data driven, like the way RecycleMania is um, and is not part of the competition. And we haven't really had students necessarily ask for that. Okay. And then uh, we had a question about how do participants submit and verify points? That's a, that's a good question. So um, up until last year, it all went through, we had um, a form on our website, they had to submit it through the form and also submit like scan their attendance sheets and things like that. And it was a lot of work for the intern running the program, a lot of paperwork. Um, and uh, it's still a lot of work for the intern running the program, but what housing has done is they've incorporated Green Games as an option in the, they have sort of a, a system an online system for all of their programming. And so it's kind of part of their system now where they submit anytime they're doing program, they, they have to put it in through the system and housing, and then they can just like check it off as a green games program and then, you know, put in the details and all of that. And then um, Taylor gets that information through that system, which has made it a lot easier for the students designing the programs and doing the programs. And then a lot easier too for Taylor because it's much more uniform. Okay. And um, that's that's it's very cool that um, this has been going on for 25 years, and you've got these folk coming back. Um, and you mentioned a couple things in housing that seem to have um, been institutionalized out of the competition, like the sustainability um, resident directors. Are there other examples that you could talk about that um, you know Green Games have have given you an idea that now are part of the the program that your office runs? Um, well, I think, so the sustainability officers have been, it's been great. That's, it's a relatively new program through community government. And um, I think uh, we're still in some ways uh, working out the um, the kinks in that partnership, but it's wonderful that there's a sustainability officer in every community. And also that, um, our office and the Green Greens intern play a role in um, the training for those sustainability officers. Um, and now um, that they're making sure that there's um, a designated Green Games RA in every community also is great. Um, I think that um, just make, you know, having that rather than, you know, it was kind of, we always had people that were excited about Green Games, but it was always kind of, um, you never knew who it was going to be, right? It would just be somebody would kind of pop up or, you know, in a, in a residence hall community, whether it was a community director or an RA or something like that. And it was just kind of, you know, a gamble every year. You never knew who you were going to get. Um, and now, um, you know, it's, it is much more institutionalized, which um, is 
is great. And I think it's still open for other people to be those people as well, but also having that kind of, you know, um, institutionalization of it um, really helps. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure I did. Yeah, I, th I think so. Um, okay. We'll do one more and then before we move on, um, you mentioned that Green Games has been, has become your main tool for promoting your office's programs. Uh, does it also help if with recruiting student interns or, or leaders, does that kind of become a natural conduit that they might get involved as a freshman in Green Games and then come to your office later and become a worker? Yeah, definitely. In fact, Taylor and then um, Kat, who was the Green Games intern before her, were both um, sustainability officers in their residence halls as first years. And so I think that really gets them involved um, and makes them aware of Green Games, makes them aware of how things work. And so that's really, it has kind of been that, at least so far, yeah, since the sustainability officers have started, has been a conduit to to becoming a Green Games, you know, intern or, you know, getting further involved. And, you know, I've had students, like I had a student, I talk about this all the time, who uh, when he was a first year, uh, he moved into Erring House, which is this big high rise residence hall on campus. And he said, you know, his community director told him that every event, you know, for the whole four years he was going to be there was going to be a BYO event because that's the way they did things at, at Erring House, you know, and, and that they were just really committed because they wanted to win a lot of Green Games points, you know, they were trying to really, but, but also it really, he said that that made a huge impact on him because that was like his first week of school and that he, it really taught him the importance of using reusables over disposables and it kind of charted this path, you know, for him and getting him really interested in, you know, um, environmentalism and waste reduction and recycling, all of that stuff. And so, um, it, it just reminded me that little things like that can have a big impact. Great. Thanks again, Amy. Um, we will have more time for questions for all the panel panelists at the end um, of the webinar, but we're going to move on right now. Our next presenter is Deborah Steinberg, who has been the Director of Sustainability Initiatives at Knox College since 2015. As the only full-time staff person in the Office of Sustainability, Deborah collaborates with students, faculty, and staff on a variety of waste reduction initiatives to support the campus's culture of sustainability. She holds a Master's of Landscape Architecture from Chatham University and a Bachelor of Science in Resource Ecology and Management from the University of Michigan. With that, I'll hand it over to Deborah. Thank you, hello. Um, just checking you can hear me all right, correct? Yes, we've got okay. you. Great. Um, so thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm going to um, start off. So I'm here to talk a little bit about um, our participation in the Recycle Mania uh, program um, from our first year, which was last year. Um, but to, to get started, I'm going to give you um, just a little information about Knox. Let me see. There we go. Um, so Knox College is a private, private liberal arts school in West Central Illinois. Uh, we are a four-year undergraduate-only college. We have uh, just under 1,400 students and about 450 faculty and staff. Um, we are primarily a res residential school um, with about 80 to 85 percent of um, all students living on campus. So I wanted to set the scene a little bit for how we got involved in Recycle Mania. Uh, in the summer of 2017, we were able to set up a uh, service contracts with uh, new solid waste and recycling vendors. And so part of that sort of contract negotiation project process, um, we required them to provide us weights um, for what was being collected. So in regards to um, our recycling vendor, we do have a dedicated route with them, which is collected in these uh, blue totes that you see on your on the slide, as well as in dumpsters at some, some of the um, buildings around campus. We do have full um, accurate weights on that, which is picked up weekly. Um, and then our solid waste is collected by um, another vendor. We have half of that um, is collected in bags. It's taken to sort of a central roll-off container picked up uh, about once a week. And then the rest is, and that we have accurate weights on, and the rest um, 
is collected in smaller dumpsters at some of the buildings, and those we um, estimate by capacity. So those we, we're not sure, basically we're not sure how full they are at pickup. Uh, so sort of a half and half with that. But with that, having weights, um, it meant that we could participate in the Recyclemania program. So we're very excited about that. And uh, we are going to hear more about Recyclemania at the end of this presentation, but I um, wanted to give a little bit of context in case um, anyone isn't familiar, just so you understand what I'm talking about as we keep going. Uh, so Recyclemania is a friendly competition to most promote waste reduction and recycling activities at your, with your campus community. Uh, it's for an eight week period and you are tracking and reporting the weight of how much is thrown out, how much food is diverted, uh, and how much is recycled. So the slide here just shows you uh, a sample of the different ways you can participate in Recyclemania at a national level um, within sort of specific item uh, diversion numbers and weights. Uh, you could compare to your rival school um, in, in a bunch of different ways to sort of take this information and make it work for you. Um, as I mentioned, last year's competition was the first year for Knox to com compete. Um, so we really wanted to use it uh, to set a baseline um, for what we were already doing and kind of get a sense of where we stood nationally and compared uh, to other people participating in the program. So we really just concentrated on the three uh, national categories, which I'm just going to give you a really quick review. Um, so diversion is just looking at the total weights reported for recycling, landfill, and food organics. Uh, the per capita uh, Classic um, looks at how much on average is being recycled per person. And then the food organics category is looking at how much food waste is diverted from the landfill. And I am going to go into a little bit more detail about this category because uh, it is not just a straight number thing. Um, Recyclemania does use EPA's food recovery hierarchy to give weight to the different ways to divert food waste. So in this case, if you look at the count, uh, triangle, like the best thing to do is at the top, um, moving down in importance, all great things to do. Um, but basically, uh, the giving to people gets a higher score than, than composting in this. So I told you a little bit about how our waste and recycling is collected on campus. Um, so I also wanted to uh, explain how we, uh, how we, what we do with food waste, basically. So, uh, Knox has a very active chapter of the Food Recovery Network. Um, so basically when um, the cafeteria on campus, we have one uh, camp cafeteria on campus. Um, so when they have leftovers that are in small enough quantities that it doesn't really make sense to uh, reserve them, um, they are collected uh, by these students and delivered to local shelters uh, and organizations in the community. Uh, that provide food uh, to, to community members. So the students do this five days a week, uh, once a day. So uh, between lunch and dinner, they collect uh, food that was set aside for them, uh, pack it up, uh, they weigh everything that is delivered, uh, and then they uh, take it on a run to whichever organization is receiving the food that day. So this was already an established program, and I was able to just work with them to get those numbers um, on what they were already doing doing. So Recyclemania is basically uh, a data tracking um, and as I mentioned Knox already has some really hard-working students. They're helping to collect food, uh, recyclables, and diverting waste or looking at our waste um, all across campus. So we're looking at Recyclemania as a, um, a means for providing a way to spread the word um, of these established efforts and to encourage increased participation and awareness uh, across campus to the students, faculty, and staff that maybe weren't aware of all this hard work that um, the students were doing, but especially to do this during Recyclemania when we're competing. Um, so this means that I needed a marketing team. Um, so I then moved beyond sort of my usual suspects of students and I recruited uh, communication students to help with social media and graphic design and writing. Uh, and, and together we, cr we brainstormed and we created a calendar of events for the eight weeks of Recyclemania. Um, and I will say that those students that I recruited to help with this planning, um, it offered me an opportunity to work with new students on campus that I didn't reach through my 
normal uh, established means of, of people working on uh, programming or that are coming to me because I'm the, the Office of Sustainability. Uh, so this was a great way to reach more students on campus through their friends and through their um, peer groups that they worked with. Uh, so that was kind of a an added benefit that happened through this. Um, and again, so we, we created this calendar of events for the eight weeks. Um, each week had a theme. Sometimes these we repeated the themes uh, and they were a mix of in-person and social media campaigns. Um, many of them are variations of sample activities that are provided by Recycle Mania and other schools that have participated in the past. Um, and we just tweaked them to fit uh, Knox College our, our campus and uh, the way our schedule is. So I'm not going to give you just a little bit of detail about each de uh, each event activity and what we did. So our mugshot program, uh, we did this for two weeks. It's a twist on the police lineup chart that would normally have your height as you stood in front of the chart to sort of see how tall you are. But in this case, we're looking, we made it a little bit more sustainability themed and sort of associated the heights with different ways that you could be sustainable to make it fun. The idea is you still take your photo in front of the, the lineup and you, uh, we were encouraged students to post those photos to different social media platforms. Um, ideally, they would tag us so we would see it. Uh, and each post, um, or if they uh, weren't comfortable posting, they could sort of give us their name. Um, so each post and each entry entered them into a raffle, um, and that raffle uh, won them a reusable mug, so the mug shot. Um, this was set up in our, we refer to it as the gallery um, in our student union, and that's where students are always tabling. Um, so students were used to that space of campus being where uh, things are promoted and learning about new events and activities on campus. So it was really easy to grab everybody's attention as they walked by. Uh, if they were interested in what this was all about, we would explain more about Recyclemania. This was our first week of the competition, so it was a, rate, a great kickoff to it because uh, this poster uh, was was up on a table um, and so it was pretty eye-catching um, and we we did get a decent crowd of people standing around taking photos so I think it attracted attention really well um, it ended up afterwards when I would reflect on the competition with uh, various students this seemed to be the activity that they remembered the most so I think that that was a very great way to kick off the competition uh, which we're gonna keep um, the next promotion that we did was a snapchat promotion so the idea was this in, in Snapchat, you can uh, customize frames that you put around the photos that you send out. Uh, so we uh, customized one with our caught green handed uh, application. So the idea was people were supposed to snap their friends or people are on campus doing sustainable efforts or participating in uh, sustainability events and then uh, snap it out to their friends. We uh, did geolocate it so that it was only available in the student union. Uh, so it did limit the availability of the frame across campus, uh, but we had most, if not all of our uh, Recycle Mania promotions happening in our student union. So it just helped with the consistency throughout the uh, competition. Um, a positive thing of the Snapchat promotion is it does give you analytics. So you can see here um, that as people were swiping through the options of frames, we, you know, over 4,000 people swiped through this one of that, uh, just over 200 used the frame, um, which means that one over 1,000 people saw it and it reached almost 3,000 people. So the use of rate wasn't great, but um, 237 people is better than nothing. So I was very happy with that. Um, one hard thing was is actually, the, during this uh, two week promotion, you can't really tell how many people are using it um, unless you receive um, a, a snap from somebody who has used it. So it was hard to see how successful it was. Um, another negative is this one does cost money. So uh, not it's depending on how how far you geolocate it, um, uh, you can adjust the, the cost of it, but um, it does use budgetary dollars. Um, and then the really big negative with this one last year is uh, the coincidence of those of you who use Snapchat. Um, you might remember that there was a week when Snapchat 
updated their uh, platform application um, and everybody was really mad about the new format and basically stopped using Snapchat. And that just happened to be the, the week, the two weeks of our present, our, our promotion. So the timing was not great uh, and ended up didn't having uh, as great of uh, uh, an effect as we anticipated. We'd really hoped to, to use the Snapchat stories to keep something going, but they took that away from us. Um, so the timing was bad. Um, so that's not, not, the fault of the idea, just the fault of the timing. Um, but with that being said, it's a, another positive. It's really easy once it's set up. You've got it. You've got it there for the two week, two weeks, and so you can catch your breath um, before it's time to do uh, the next, the next activity in your your eight weeks. So the next thing that we did, uh, we called trivia plinko. Um, we also did this for two weeks at different times. Those of you who are not familiar with The Price is Right, uh, basically drop a disc which bounces around on some pegs uh, before landing at the bottom, uh, which has different labels at the bottom. Um, on the show, you would win cash prizes, uh, but instead ours dropped you into which category you would be asked a question. Uh, we had four categories, reduce, reuse, recycle, and NOx. The NOx questions, uh, were all related to waste reduction programs on campus uh, to see how much they knew about what was happening uh, at, at their school. Uh, so they answer a question and then they get a piece of candy or some non-food item like a sticker or other things that I've collected through the years um, for their uh, participation. So a positive of this is that our student activities club uh, already owned the tabletop Plinko game piece. So we were able to borrow that. So that was um, low cost. Um, the prizes were low cost. Uh, if you, um, you know, you can find affordable candy and kind of collect non-food items throughout the year uh, to, to do as giveaways. And then the really the best thing with the Trivia Plinko is we're tricking the students into learning things um, to participate. They have to answer a trivia question. Uh, and if they get the trivia question wrong, they're learning something. Um, so it, it worked out really well. Um, some of our students that were running this uh, activity would quiz the participants until they got something right. So sometimes they were learning two or three or four things um, at a time based on uh, how long they were willing to, to stand there and listen to questions. Um, so I thought this was a really successful event. Again, it was in that our gallery setting. So people are used to uh, being talked to in that space and having time to chat before they pop into the cafeteria. And um, it was really um, a successful way to uh, reach out about the program and, and help them learn about uh, waste reduction and recycling uh, efforts on campus. So then we also had uh, finally our caught green handed promotion. So we made these uh, this logo into a sticker um, and then we uh, recruited agents uh, that would be given a, a, a 10 or so stickers and it was their responsibility to as they're just going through their normal uh, days around campus to um, catch people in the act of doing something sustainable so either uh, recycling um, you recycling correctly uh, using a reusable mug turning the lights off uh, and so on anything uh, that was really promoting uh, sustainability efforts around campus then they would get a sticker um, it was uh, another somewhat passive activity because we didn't have to have a specific time or place uh, we did need to again prepare ahead of time where you're recruiting these agents to hand out the stickers part of the idea was um, in receiving a sticker uh, that we could recruit those uh, people to be agents and then to also hand out stickers to people they catch uh, green-handed uh, so that we can sort of grow the the tree of people looking out for these behaviors and encouraging them across campus um, reaching more and more people if a, if a friend tells another friend friend so on uh, that were um, again going beyond those usual suspects that um, participate in, in sustainability events on campus. So that's uh, a positive. Um, I found to this event that uh, our students really love stickers. So this was a success. They were really excited to get these stickers. Um, and we were also able to use them for the Trivia Plinko prizes. Um, 
Another positive is we did make these um, neutrally themed um, so that they can be used as a prize or other promotional um, material any other times during the event, uh, Earth Day events, Sustainability Month events. Uh, so that was really successful. We've already done this campaign again, uh, and it's just a nice thing to uh, consistently have going on every so often. We want to, again, passively kind of promote these behaviors across campus. Um, one negative is that it does uh, cost money to um, purchase the stickers, or at least the way we did it. Um, and then it does take some some planning uh, to design the sticker that you want to use, as well as uh, order it and have it um, arrive on time. Ours definitely came uh, right at the, the deadline, so it's something to, to keep in mind if this is an activity that uh, you want to pursue. So those are the... Um, the activities that we did during the eight weeks, um, and it was to help sort of keep the idea of us participating in Recyclemania throughout uh, the, the eight week competition. So it brings, um, brings us to the results. So the week one results are posted to everybody about week three after everybody sub submitted the, the data and um, Recyclemania is it back to get able to get it back to us. So, um, you know, two weeks into the competition, we were really excited to see that we were number one in the food organics position. Um, so that was super exciting and really inspired us to to keep up the good work, uh, to, to promote it even more. It gave us another uh, means for promoting it and getting people um, excited and involved and thinking about it uh, because it was through our food organics, we could promote uh, the Food Recovery Network Club more um, and the efforts that they're doing and really push people to help them during these eight weeks uh, to keep to keep our uh, position here. And as you see, we did maintain uh, over the eight weeks that we did hold that number one p p position and were able to uh, win uh, the food organics category in our first year, which was a great, great thing. Um, and um, we, in addition to that, again, you know, we were using this as a, a benchmark to kind of see where we compared in uh, the per capita classic. We were placed about 15th out of um, 229 schools, which um, is a is a great standing that we we're excited to hear that. So we're cycling about 30 pound, uh, pounds per person over those eight weeks. So with that, we're um, excited to par participate again in 2019. Um, we've got a few plans um, for this upcoming competition. We're going to bring in two new events uh, and swap out the Snapchat uh, promotion. Uh, our, the students who were working with me last year were very interested in uh, Snapchat as a way to reach people. Um, and the student working with me this year uh, is not as much of a Snapchat fan. So we did take that one that one away um, and we're replacing it with two one-shot events. So instead of having full week promotions, uh, we're just gonna do one event uh, in place of those two, two weeks. Um, and that will be interesting to see how that goes instead of the, the week-long promotion. So that'll be new. Um, and this year, we're going to actually compete with ourselves. So we're going to kind of see how we're doing this year as compared to the 2018 version of our results and hopefully um, spur ourselves on to beat beat last year. Um, and we will possibly also maybe pick a couple schools uh, to compete against uh, just as another way to have some friendly rivalry. Uh, our neighboring uh, athletic rival does not participate. So we have found other schools to encourage ourselves to uh, compete against. Um, and we do want to increase our social media presence on different platforms and hopefully reach more people through that. And then beyond that, we really want to collaborate with other campus groups, hopefully uh, get athletics involved and do some game day competitions. Um, very far in the future, we'd like to work better on getting those actual solid waste weights for half so that our results will be even more accurate. And to even improve our food waste efforts, uh, we hope to add composting for the food waste that isn't being captured in other ways. So that was all um, I had prepared at this point, and I can take some questions at this point, and you can reach me um, by email if anybody has any questions to follow up afterwards. Thanks so much, Deborah. That was that was great, and congratulations on your uh, first place finish last Thank year. You. Um, that uh, you know, one of the goals of of any competition, but especially Recycle Mania, is is getting attention from outside um, our programs. Did you find that um, just 
participating and then especially finishing um, so well got attention outside of your office, either from your administration or um, or just the community in general? Sure, I think because we had this concrete thing to say about it, instead of just that we were participating, participating that uh, we were able to take away a, a first place standing that really helped us market it. And I think our communications department um, really liked that. We were able to uh, present some of this to um, the board of trustees and kind of let them know. Um, and I think that for us, it helped put um, kind of a concrete face to the efforts that have been happening at Knox at some time. You know, we've had student groups that started recycling uh, beyond paper back in the 90s, and it has sort of been something that's been a, uh, a kind of a thing that I may, maybe the campus community takes for granted because it's always been there. So this way we're able to say like, look at what we're doing and it's really great. And it's, it's not commonplace and that we should, um, we were able to really con to highlight and congratulate ourselves for um, the, the hard work that everybody's doing on campus. Great. Um, when you were talking about switching your vendors and, and the new hauling contracts, did you find that um, there was any added cost to get the numbers reported back to you or was that a pretty easy thing to negotiate? So we had the advantage of being able to um, have some conversations with the vendors who we were interested in um, asking for bids and kind of talking about what would work for them to be able to provide us with weights and how we can make that work. Um, so we had the, the as I mentioned, the, the solid waste vendors, it's really kind of a half and half. And I think that's something that we could um, work better for in the future. But at this point, um, some numbers are better than no numbers. And just the fact that they know that we want them uh, helps us when we're requesting them. Uh, and then the recycling vendor, which is a different company, they're solely recycling. Um, and it's some, well, they started as solely recycling and, and it's something that they uh, really believe in. They've worked on Recyclemania at other schools and they uh, were happy to help us out. And I think that it just, again, was working with them up front that this is something that we really was really important to us that they were able to make it work in terms of giving us this dedicated route and really working us working with us uh, to get us um, weights so that we can participate in things like this. Great. And um, it sounds like a real success story getting the market marketing team in place. Can you talk a little bit more about how many students you have working for you and if they're paid or they're getting school credit or how you incentivize those positions? Sure. Um, the the Office of Sustainability uh, has two um, campus programs that I run. Uh, one is a Campus Farm is another bike shop. And so I do hire students um, for that uh, and they are paid. Um, the funding for that comes from uh, a sustainability fund that our student senate runs, which is a, a green fee, which is part of the student tuition. So they're sort of, they've you know, recognized the importance of these positions and these programs and, and are uh, helping to, to, to fund those students to, to basically run those initiatives. Um, I then have uh, a certain number of hours um, for students to hire to support my office and those do come from my budget and it's um, less hours but I um, spread spread them out basically to help me support different programming. So last year I, I was able to hire three students um, just a couple hours a week um, to help with um, one was doing the social media and one was doing um, some writing for me and then uh, the third was doing the, the graphic design. Um, so they uh, helped to do all the planning with me uh, on this year uh, for this this year that I just talked about. Um, then for 2019, I have two students helping me um, to do this one. So one on one, we just basically used all the great information that we put together last year and, and moved forward this this year with it. Um, and then uh, I'm pulling basically to staff um, all of this this year, I'm using our uh, different sustainability groups. So it's the one student is being paid through my office to help plan, and then I'm recruiting volunteers to help staff this year. Did I fully answer that? That's that's great. Okay. Um, 
And then we, we had two questions about the um, Snapchat promotion sure. uh, or related to it. One is, what's your entire uh, student population? Uh, just under 1,400. Okay, so almost 300 participants is a pretty good chunk. Yeah. Um, yeah. So congratulations on that. Thank and, you. And, I know, I was shocked to see that number. The, <laughs> the photo with the, um, it looked like a drawer recycling, was that candy bar wrapper recycling? Yes, so I will admit that those photos um, were doctored for this presentation. So those are photos that I had and then I put the frame that we did actually use from Snapchat. Um, but yes, it was a little foil wrapper. Uh, so we participate in the uh, TerraCycle recycling, so the non-traditional recycling. And so through them, you can do foil candy wrappers. Um, so those numbers aren't aren't uh, included into in the Recycle Mania numbers. That's just your our regular um, paper, plastic, metal stuff. So that was just kind of like a fun picture. Right. Okay. Well, again, uh, we'll have some more time for questions at the end of all the presentations. So if you have any for Deborah or Amy, uh, go ahead and use the the question section on um, the GoToWebinar dashboard. Moving right along, um, our final presenter is Christy Jones, who is Senior Manager of Higher Education Programs. Um, at the National Wildlife Federation, leading NWF's works in student career and leadership development and campus greening. Christy manages the Recyclemania program, helping colleges and universities increase their recycling and reduce waste, and helps identify opportunities for students to gain leadership skills through their Recyclemania competitions. Christy has co-authored The Campus Wildlife, How College and University Green Landscapes Provide Havens for Wildlife, and Lands On, Experiences for Students and high, Higher Education in a Warming World, the business case for climate leadership on campus. Before joining NWF, Christy worked at the Foundation for Environmental Security and Sustainability. Christy also spent six years working for the Center for Field Studies at George Mason University and managing the Bahamas Environmental Research Center on Andros Island. Christy has a BA in Anthropology and Master's in Environmental Studies. Christy is a lead green associate. Take it away, Christy. All right, Larry, thank you so much. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen with everybody, and I'm hoping I'm coming through clearly. Yes. All right, perfect. All right, so um, as Larry said, I am managing the Recyclemania program for uh, 2019. This is the first year I'm managing it, but Recyclemania has been around for a very long time, um, since 2001, so uh, almost 18 years. And I'm going to do an overview of the competition and, and go through the nuts and bolts of the competition and how to participate. And um, I know that we, we heard a little bit from Debbie on how to do that, uh, on, on how they participated. So I think that was really helpful. And I'll try to get into a few more details um, as well. And then we can open for questions at the end. So quickly, just a little bit of history. So National Wildlife Federation, not a long history ago, um, National Wildlife Federation, we are the new managing partner for Recyclemania. This is our first year, 2019. Recyclemania in the past was uh, managed by Keep America Beautiful, and I believe before that other organizations, but we were very excited about the opportunity to um, work with Recyclemania Inc. on this competition. National Wildlife Federation, we've worked with colleges and universities for uh, three decades on campus sustainability. And we saw this as a great opportunity to continue that work, but also really focus in on the plastics pollution that affects humans and wildlife. And it's something that NWF is very interested in focusing on um, and addressing in the coming years and hope to engage Recyclemania in that as well. So the agenda for today, I'm gonna talk about the categories the opportunities to engage with Recyclemania, um, hopefully highlight the, w highlight the different ways depending on if you're just getting start started or if you've participated um, in Recyclemania in the past or you're just getting started with recycling and a waste reduction effort on campus. We'll talk about reporting, um, highlight next steps um, to get involved, and also talk a little bit about the student leadership development opportunities that we see as part of the Recyclemania program. 
one of the key areas that National Wildlife focuses on for college students, high school students, as well as young professionals, is leadership development and career development um, to get them ready to be successful in school, on campus, and also be successful in their careers. And we really feel like these uh, experiences on campus um, give these students the experience that they need to be competitive in the job market. You know, we had heard from Knox College, um, you engaged uh, students from the communications department. So I wanted to just highlight what we thought is a good opportunity for students to get some, some leadership development as they participate in Recycle Mania. So just quickly, I wanted to do a question to find out how many folks on the line have participated in Recycle Mania before. All right, let me know, Larry, if I'm supposed to do something or if folks can see the poll already. All right, I think people should be able to vote now. Sorry about that delay. Oh, yeah, no, no problem. I just want to make sure that <laughs> it wasn't me. All right, uh, I think you should be able to see the results. 68% yes and 32% no. Okay, um, thank you. I, I'm not able to see them, but I'm sure it's because I'm not clicking on something properly. So uh, that's good to know. We have uh, more than half of the folks have participated in the past. Um, so maybe I'll <laughs> provide a little bit information. Maybe you had some questions, but 32% have not. So that's, that's also good to know. Um, and then of course, we'll have questions at the end. So thank you for answering that question. All right, so quickly, the main goals of the Recycle Mania program are we want to motivate students, faculty, and staff to increase recycling and to reduce waste. Um, we also wanna help bring attention to the campus recycling programs. Um, there's many reasons for that. I mean, it helps uh, gain support on campus um, continued administrative support, et cetera, and also support um, beyond the campus borders with the community. It also helps with helping colleges um, measure and provide a benchmark. So if you wanna, um, if you're just getting started, it can help you figure out where you are. Um, and if you've participated in it for a couple years, then it can show you how you've been improving. Um, and we also wanna highlight that it's a fair and friendly competition. Um, I've, I've never ever had a, an experience or heard a story that it wasn't a friendly competition. So I'm glad to, <laughs> glad to hear that. Um, and we hope that it is a fair competition. All right, so the, the competition was designed to be um, a flexible way to, for campuses to participate. Um, and, and a few ways that is, um, there are a couple different category opportunities for schools to participate in. Um, there are, as um, we heard previously, the three main categories, which I'll get into them detailed. The competition is eight weeks. So for if you participate in Recycle Mania in three of the main categories, you will be reporting for, for eight straight weeks. There's also special categories um, that provide a little bit more flexibility. They are, um, most of them are one-time reporting categories over a smaller amount of time. So there is a little bit of flex, there is flexibility with the competition, just trying to figure out what your goals are in participating in Recycle Mania and reducing your waste and increasing recycling. And I'll highlight those um, moving forward. And of course, your, the flexibility to um, 
how much you want to do, how much outreach you want to do around recycle mania. Are you focusing in on one building? Um, are you really just measuring you don't have the capacity to do a, a full blown outreach campaign and a lot, a lot of different activities like we heard about? And of course, you can, um, there's the opportunity to um, do a, uh, a benchmark so you can see how you've been doing over the last couple of years. Um, there's an opportunity to do an internal competition, which means you just, you want to do a bench, you can choose the benchmark category. You won't be part of the national ranking. You're really just interested in having a competition on your campus. So, um, like I said, the program is designed to be as flexible as possible and engage campuses that are at different levels of having the different levels of their waste management and recycling programs on campus. All right, so for last year, just a quick recap. Um, it was a very successful year. 300 campuses participated, um, engaging 3.6 million students and 68.6 .6 million pounds of recyclables and food waste were collected. So I just wanted to highlight that it's always been a very successful program and engaging lots of folks and we hope to have another Good year for 2019. All right, so choosing your categories. As I mentioned, um, there are three main, so the, so the first, if you decide to participate in Recycle Mania, the first question we're gonna ask you is do you wanna be part of the competition division or the benchmark division? And what that means is if you're gonna check, you're gonna be part of the official competition, you're gonna be in the official ranking with all schools that are participating in the competition. You can also choose the benchmark division, which means you won't be part of the official ranking, um, but you will, you will be entering data um, according to the rules and participating in the competition. Now, campuses choose the benchmarking division for a lot of different reasons. One, um, they might simply not be interested in being part of the official ranking. This might be their first time they're participating in Recycle Mania and just kind of want to figure out how it works and aren't ready to do that. So that's the first. Um, that is the first decision that you will make. Um, I'll tell you a majority of the campuses that participate do participate in the competition division um, and are part of the official ranking, but that's completely up to you. Then the second decision you'll make, there are three main categories of Recycle Mania. There's the diversion category, which means you need to report on your recycling, trash, and food waste. The second category is per capita classic. That means you're only reporting on recycling and you'll also uh, be entering in your data on your FTE population, which we actually collect that data for all categories. And then the third main category is on food waste. That's obviously focused on food and, and Debbie uh, got into the details of that um, in our previous presentation. Now, you campuses can participate in all three. You can participate in two, or you can participate in one of the main categories. Or if you choose, you can participate in only a special category, which I will highlight in a few minutes. I wanted to just go into the details a little bit of these three main category opportunities. All right, so for the diversion category, this is the first main category, as I mentioned. Um, schools will be asked to um, provide data on trash, and your recycling, which includes paper, cardboard, cans, and bottles, um, as well as food waste. So that is the first um, that is the first category opportunity that you have. And there are more details about this category online. So this is just kind of a snapshot of what this would require if you participate in this main one one of these main categories. The second main category opportunity is the per capita category. This is focused on um, how many, the amount of recyclables um, divided by your campus population. So this category, you will be reporting on your recyclables only, paper, cardboard, bottles, and cans. Um, you will not be reporting on trash, uh, and food is not part of this category either. All right, so moving on, the third category, which Knox College had highlighted, <clears throat> excuse me, earlier, is our food waste category. Now this, um, this category, I believe this is the second year that this category has been part of Recycle Mania. It's focused solely on food, um, and the, 
the categories are pre and post consumer food waste, compostable serviceware use, cooking grease. And as um, we saw in the previous presentation, there's the, um, the uh, I, I'm at a loss for, oh, the pyramid, the pyramid. Um, and all of that information is, is online and there's this this um, category is a little bit it's a little it's, I wouldn't say it's complicated but it's a new cat it's a second year category for recycle mania and it has a lot more details and I'd be happy to answer questions about it or um, and I can also point you in the right direction to see all the information online as well all right so with the traditional categories the three main qu categories as I mentioned just to kind of uh, repeat what I said, um, recyclables include uh, cans, bottles, paper, and cardboard, and food organics for the diversion category, and of course, the food category. Um, what's not accepted are appliances, scrap metals, construction waste, medical waste. Um, the bottom of this slide, elect electronics is starred, and that is because uh, we have a special category for electronics, which I'll tell you about. All right, so with the traditional categories, there's a weekly reporting schedule. The competition um, begins on February 3rd, so it begins on Sunday. Um, so uh, the deadline, I should have started out with this. The deadline for registration is this Friday, February 1st. However, um, there's a little bit of flexibility with that um, as long as we can get the data in for the first week of reporting. But I'll highlight those, those deadlines uh, before we close today. So for the three main categories, there's weekly reporting for eight weeks. You'll report, um, your week will go by, you'll have the opportunity to report Monday through Wednesday of the following week, and then I will post the um, how everybody's doing that following Friday. And there's a scoreboard, there's a scoreboard op op option on the Recycle Mania website. It's in the top hand nav navigation. You click on that and you can see how everyone's doing. And this is what an, an example of that report would look like. All right, so I wanted to dig in a little bit quickly because um, I want to leave time for questions on the special categories. Now, this, um, these are there's four main special categories. Three of them um, require uh, focusing in on you know it's. It, Three of the main categories are actually the recycling and the, the traditional part of recycle mania. The fourth category is on case study, is a case study um, opportunity. So the first special category is on, is on electronics. Now this is a one-time reporting for a month, a month long period of time. And that month long period has to be within the eight month, eight week competition window. And so you choose your month, you collect the electronics, and then you enter the data. And this is a per, cap, per capita ranking. So this is, um, this is uh, I, I think, a great opportunity for, for a school that's getting just getting started if they just want to see how Recycle Mania goes and the reporting structure. The second opportunity is game day basketball. So for schools that have basketball on campus, this is a great opportunity. It's focused on one home game. You um, report on the recycling, trash, and food organics. There's actually uh, two rankings for this category. So per capita, which is only recycling reporting, and then diversion, which is trash, food, and organics. Again, one home game, one time reporting. I've, uh, I've had a couple questions from schools. If, they, if, if we can um, report on sports that are not, that's not basketball. Um, and the answer is yes. So for this year, because I received a couple questions. What I've said to schools is if they're interested in reporting on another sport, sporting event, they need to follow the similar, similar rules. So it needs to be a home, home game, home match, um, one time reporting, and they can report per capita and or diversion. Um, the only thing for this year, because uh, if they, if the school chooses to, to report on something that's not basketball, um, it's kind of, it's not following the exact rules of the category. So for this year, we're asking schools, we're, we're just kind of saying that schools can 
participate, they can track, but we're not going to be, they're not going to be part of the official ranking of game day basketball, um, simply because it's, 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 it's a different sport and we just really need to figure out how that works. But I think for next year, we're going to consider a winter sports category since I've had a couple schools really interested in reporting and focusing on other sports. All right, so uh, the next special category opportunity is race to zero waste building. Again, this is a one-time reporting. You choose one building on campus over four weeks and you have to provide actual waste. Um, and this category was added a few years ago in an effort to really kind of lift up the reducing waste, zero waste component of the Recycle Mania program. The fourth special category, this is a little bit different than the other categories. This is a case study competition. This category we ask all schools that are participating in Recycle Mania to uh, tell us how they're launching their, their campaigns. We want to know who's involved, um, what exactly they're doing, what outreach strategies worked, et cetera. So it, it's a good best practice. Um, it's schools giving, give, giving us, um, sharing their best practices and lessons learned. And then the case studies are then posted on our website. All right, so quickly, um, so steps to get ready. You need to register, um, set goals for your, your program, get your team together. So if there's folks on campus that you think have the expertise you need, like communications department or whatever, um, get them together, figure out what resources you have, um, plan your outreach activities, and then you'll need to do your, enter in your data. This is a, a quick snapshot. So to register for Recycle Mania, again, the deadline to register is February 1st, which is Friday. However, the first week of the competition begins on Sunday, February 3rd. And reporting for the competition is the following Wednesday. So let me just check the calendar really quick so I can tell you what that date is. So the first week of the competition is the 3rd through the 9th. And then reporting for that first week is the 13th. So we're actually, I'm actually allowing schools to register as late as February 11th if they'd like, as long as they can provide accurate data reporting for that first week of the competition, which is the third through the ninth. Of course, if you're doing a special category and you're doing choosing one month to do zero waste electronics or game day basketball, then that there's not an issue with reporting for that first week as long as you're not choosing that week's not part of your time frame. Um, the first step is to create or log back into Retrack. If you don't know what that is, I can help you figure that out. And then you'll fill out the profile information survey, basically a registration form for Recycle Mania. Um, and this is just an example of a campus profile page. All right, uh, we have some great web resources online at RecycleMania.org. We have a planning checklist. We have the rules, uh, lots of opportunities to download materials to customize for your school, activity ideas, et cetera. And you can just, um, just go to RecycleMania.org and it's in the top hand navigation. All right, so data tracking logistics. This is the, um, the most this is the question we get the most. So uh, if you wanna participate in Recycle Mania, you just need to figure out where you can get your data. And the first stop is to um, connect with your hauler to see if he or she, they can provide the data um, on a weekly basis. If not, um, then you can enter in placeholder numbers and adjust those numbers at a later date once you actually get the report. There's also the opportunity to do a volume to weight estimate if you cannot get actual weight. And there is a very detailed, um, there's a lot of details online on how to do that. And I'm happy to talk to you about that as well. All right, um, the, I kind of just went over these deadlines. Uh, again, deadline to register is this Friday, although there's some flexibility um, if, if you're interested and just need a little bit more time. Competition begins this Sunday. Uh, competition ends on March 30th, and then we plan to announce the final results in mid-April. 
All right, so the last few slides, I highlighted um, student leadership at the very beginning. Um, National Wildlife Federation were really interested in just helping students be successful on campus, successful in their careers, and hoping that they gain sustainability sk skills that they'll take on into their careers and in their lives. Um, and Knox, uh, Debbie had mentioned this already, like communications. We find with students being part of these Recycle Mania ca campaigns and other sustainability projects on campus, they are learning a lot. Their project management, they're learning project management, communications, problem solving, for example, figuring out how to get the data, team building, working with different stakeholders on campus, volunteer recruitment, <laughs> getting people to, to join in and help them out. Uh, fundraising, that could be going to different departments um, to see if funds are available. That could be, I don't know, um, doing something, you know, getting a donation and, and selling items, getting a donation from off campus. So we've just, these, these are just a couple, but if you've worked with students on campus, you know that they are experiencing and demonstrating a lot of different leadership um, as part of these teams. Now, <clears throat> As part of uh, National Wildlife Federation, we have um, a couple different tools and resources I wanted to highlight. We have an eco-leader certification. So this is an opportunity for students that are participating in Recycle Mania. They can complete certification application and get certified and, they can and then they can list it on their resumes. And what this means is it's a project-based certification. So it means they've demonstrated um, skills in project management, implementation, communication, and sustainability. Um, and like I said, I can tell you more about that. We also have a very robust project planning resource library that's online, that's free, that has resources on writing a press release, fundraising, et cetera. We also have a career center online that just highlights information across different career sectors. And that is not directly related to Recycle Mania, but if you have students participating in Recycle Mania, they just might be interested to see what the opportunities are. Now, I have a link on here. It's NWF Eco Leaders. That's what our program is called for the student and career leadership development for students. Students simply just have to, they have to join the community and they can access all these resources for free. Uh, faculty and staff are also welcome to join. All right. Uh, and our partners for this year are Aishi, Kirk, and Keep a California Beautiful. So we really appreciate uh, your help in getting us the word out about Recycle Mania. And that is the end of my presentation. I have some information up here so you can reach out with any questions. Great, thank you, Christy. Uh, we do have uh, one question about um, if you could describe in a little more detail how the ranking for food waste is calculated. Um, the question was students have kind of asked if it's actually a good thing to do well if in regard to how much does the reported weight actually go into the ranking so the the, the question coming from the students is if we've got a lot of food waste maybe that's not a good thing because we're not focusing as much on the reduction but how what can you describe the algorithm or whatever that you're using a little more yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm pulling up here um, some of the details on the food organics, just so folks. I mean, this is not a, the best way, but I wanted to highlight. As <clears throat> excuse me, Debbie mentioned, um, we the category is based on the EPA's food recovery hierarchy. So that was the graphic that she showed in her, in her um, presentation, and the tiers are here. I can actually link to it so we can take a look at it again. This is not very big, but um, that's, it's the source reduction, feed hungry people, feed animals, industrial uses, and composting. Um, and let me go back a little bit. I want to show you a little bit more details. And this category also, also includes points on, for, to schools on food waste minimization activities. So that's where the actually reducing of the waste um, is, is taken into consideration. So compostable serviceware, small plates, pre-ordered meals, et cetera. And this short list is here. So it's a combination of the food waste minimization ac activities, and then the schools are then, on, then reporting on of the food that is left over, how it, what, what is done with that food. And that's based on that 
again, that hierarchy, the donation, animals, fed to animals, biofuels, or, um, or compostable serviceware. Did that answer that question? I, I think so. Um, so it's not just based on volume, which I think was the concern of the students. Right. And it's, yeah, yeah. And, and just as a whole with Recycle Mania, we have, um, so in, within the food category, we have points for these minim minimization activities. And also to highlight, if you're participating in this category and your activity isn't listed here, there is an option to enter something else in. Plus, we <clears throat> we are um, we we want to increase the emphasis on reducing waste um, within the Recycle Mania competition, and we hope to be able. I'm not sure what that looks like, to be honest, um, but we hope to to move the program in that in that direction. You know, increasing recycling, recycling responsibly, obviously, but really just reducing waste and looking to avoid single use items and, and uh, you know, managing food waste as best possible. Great. Um, and then one last thing, um, do you have recommendations for community colleges that would be less residential or, uh, you know, just poses a, a different um, set of challenges to some extent, or do you, do you have an idea of how many community colleges are participating already? Um, at, I know we do have community colleges that are participating for this year, um, and community colleges have always um, participated in the competition. Now, with um, with community colleges, it's not it's you know there's there's probably different challenges. Um, you know, there's different you know they're set up differently, and they don't have on campus students, so. It could be that you might want to focus in on one of the special categories. It, it depends on your campus. So I'm in the Northern Virginia region, and so Northern Virginia Community College is um, near me, and it has many, many campuses. And uh, you know, community colleges—that's what they do. They don't have on-campus residents. They have folks community commuting in, taking classes, and leaving faculty and staff. <coughs> So I think it would be a matter of just deciding what your the best bang for your buck would be. Like, do you want to um, looking at your recycling and your waste management? Is there a particular building that you might want to focus in on? It, you know, what is the building on the campus that is most busy any time during the day? Um, you know, the student union, the library, for example, or a theater, for example. So that might be one way to approach it. And um, and you can do that. You can you you can do that. Depend. You could do a zero waste category, or you could do one of the diversion or the per capita categories. And if you are a community college and you have um, a couple of campuses, whenever d depending on where you want to focus your competition, just make sure that you're reporting on the student and faculty staff FTE for that campus and not for the entire system, because you want to make sure your efforts efforts are connected with how many people that you will be impacting and engaging. And, and one last thing on that, another with the with the electronics category, that is also a really elect we all have so many electronics and that always jumps out at people because they kind of pile up um, at your house or whatever. And so that might be a really a really good opportunity for a community college to participate. Plus with the electronics category, um, it's open to the community as well. Um, and I know a lot of community colleges have um, used their campus for community events, you know, in different ways. So that might be an opportunity. Great, thank you very much. Um, that's all the uh, time we have for questions today. Um, but I do want to uh, point your attention to uh, the fact that this is the first um, webinar, webinar in our 2019 series, and uh, we are busy finalizing the program for the entire year. So um, keep our website in mind or the Recycle Listserv um, to check out 
our past webinars and in the next coming weeks, the list of our webinars for this year. Following this um, webinar, you should receive a prompt to complete a quick survey. We encourage you to take a minute to give us feedback on today's program. Again, we want to thank AISHI for their support of the 2019 series, along with Recyclemania for their participation today. And one last time, join me in thanking Amy, Deborah, and Christy for their presentations today. Look for their presentations on the Kirk website uh, and a recording of this program in the next day or so. Hope you all have a good afternoon. Thank you.